What's up guys, Bress here. If you're wondering which race is best for your character in Elder Scrolls Online, then this guide is for you. And just a reminder, before we get started, I'm putting videos out like this three to four times a week, so make sure to hit the subscribe button for regular content. So there are a lot of factors to consider when picking a race in Elder Scrolls Online. Some of these are the look of the character, the areas that they start their story in, and racial abilities, and we're going to take a look at all of this. Before we dive into the races themselves, let's take a quick look at factions. Whichever race you pick, you're going to join one of three factions, and each faction has a different storyline and starting area. First of all, you have the Aldmeri Dominion. The races that make up the Dominion are Altma, which are High Elves, Bosma, which are Wood Elves, and Khajiit which are the guys that kind of look like lions. And your starting zone, if you pick a Dominion race, is going to be Kanafi's Roost. This area has a typical Alvin feel to it with elegant buildings and pretty landscapes, as you can see here. The next faction is the Daggerfall Covenant. The Covenant is made up of Bretons, Red Guards, and Orcs. And the starting area is the Pirate Island of Strosmakai. This is personally my favorite starting area. I really like the exotic feel and the sense of adventure I get here. The third faction is the Ebonheart Pact. This is made up of the Nord, Dunmer, which are the Dark Elves, and the Argonian races. The Argonians are the ones that kind of look like lizards, if anyone was wondering. The starting area of the Ebonheart Pact is Bleak Rock Isles. This is probably my least favourite starting area, as I do find it a little too bleak. The clues in the name, after all. However, I do really like the Norse theme, and I don't want to put the area down. It's very well done. Especially if you like snowy environments, this is probably going to be the one for you to pick. It's important to remember though that you'll soon move on from these zones and continue your storyline. And you'll also get to experience all three of the storylines eventually. So I wouldn't make this too big a factor when you're picking your race. However, it's definitely worth taking into account because this is going to be where you first experience the game. And the level of immersion is going to be really important. So let's take a look at the passive abilities that each race offers. First up is Argonian. Argonians get increased experience gain with restoration staff skills. They can swim 50% faster than everyone else. They get an increase their maximum amount of magicka and also gain extra benefits from potions. They get an increase their maximum health as well as poison and disease resistance and an increase to both healing done and received. This makes the Argonians very effective healers. The Dunmer get increased experience for the dual wield skill line. Their damage taken by environmental lava is reduced by 50%. They get an increased maximum magicka and maximum stamina. They also get an increased flame resistance, as well as increased flame, frost and shock damage. This makes the Dunmer very suited to dealing magic damage. Moving on to the Nord race. Nords get increased experience on the two-handed skill line. They get an increased buff duration on any consumed drink. They get a nice increase to their maximum stamina and health recovery. They get a big increase to their max health and cold resistance, as well as having an increased damage reduction. These racial abilities make Nords very suited to tanking. Moving on to the Ultima, which are the High Elves. They get increased experience for the Destruction Staff skill line. They get an overall increase in experience gained. They get an increase in both Magicka recovery and Max Magicka. They also get an increase to Flame, Frost and Shock damage. This allows the High Elves to be very effective healers and magic damage dealers. Next we have the Bosma, which are the Wood Elves. They get increased experience on the Bow skill line. They get decreased falling damage. They get increased stamina recovery. They get increased max stamina and poison and disease resistance. They're harder to detect whilst in stealth. And they get increased damage done whilst in stealth. This makes Wood Elves very effective as stealthy assassins who can deal a huge amount of damage. Next we have the Kajit, and they're the ones that look a bit like lions. They get increased experience gain for the medium armor skill line. They have an increased chance to successfully pickpocket. They get an increase to health recovery and stamina recovery. Just like with the Wood Elves, they're harder to detect in stealth and they do increased damage whilst in stealth. And they also get an increase to weapon critical strike chance. And this makes them a very powerful race for stealthy DPS. Next up we have the Bretons, now they get increased experience gain on the light armor skill line. They get an increase to the alliance points they gain, they get increased max magicka, they get an increased spell resistance, and they also get a reduced magicka cost for their abilities. This makes the Bretons some of the best healers and magic damage dealers. Moving on to the Orcs, the Orcs get increased experience gain on the heavy armor skill line. 
they get an increase to their crafting inspiration, they get an increase to maximum health and maximum stamina, they also get an increase to healing received and health recovery. And on top of that, they get increased damage with melee weapons, a reduced sprint cost and an increased sprint speed. This makes Orcs a really nice tanky DPS and a brilliant solo race. Next up we have Red Guards. Now Red Guards get increased experience gain with one handed and shield skills. They get an increased buff duration on any food they eat. They get an increased stamina recovery as well as an increased maximum stamina. And their melee attacks restore a percentage of their maximum stamina, though this effect can only occur once every 5 seconds. Red Guards are hands down one of the best tank options available. Finally we have the Imperial Race and they're actually quite similar to Red Guards. They get an increased experience gain on the one handed and shield line, they get an increased gold gain, they get an increased in maximum health and maximum stamina and their melee attacks have a chance to restore a percentage of their maximum health. So which of these classes should you pick for the role you want to play? If you want to tank then you're probably going to want to look at Imperials, Red Guards and Nords as they have the most significant passive abilities that affect tanking. If you want to be a healer, then look at the races that get buffs to healing and magicka. Bretons, Altmers and Argonians are solid choices here. For DPS, a lot of classes can work. It really depends on how you want to play your class. For example, you might want to pick Dunmer for a magical DPS build, but then you might opt for Redguard if you're looking for a sustained stamina DPS build. Of course, none of this is set in stone and it's always subject to change. There are plenty of creative ways to play your race and class, and player skill is a much bigger factor than any of these racial passives. In my opinion, at least, it's most important just to pick what you like the look of. If you don't like the look of High Elves, for example, then it's going to really diminish your game if that's what you have to look at every time you want to play. If you're just a casual player then racial abilities probably aren't going to affect you that much. However, if you want to take on some of the more difficult end game content then it's definitely worth having a good think about your racial abilities. So that brings us to the end of the video and I hope this brief guide helps you pick the race that's right for you in Elder Scrolls Online. Let me know in the comments down below which faction and race you plan to play with. Also, if you like the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I will see you next time.